So I've been using Zalatol for over half a year right now and it's become a reliable tool for me to maintain my oral hygiene. When I first started, I was quite skeptical. It didn't really work how I wanted it to work, but over time as I explored and experimented and tried new things, I found how to use Zalatol, I found the quirks around it, and I realized that Zalatol was a really good thing for my oral hygiene. So in this video, I'll be covering all of these questions that I found answers to during my Zalatol journey. Let's begin. So what is Zalatol? Well, Zalatol is a sugar substitute that was discovered back in 1890s. Later on, it was researched for oral hygiene purposes in 1970s. Zalatol can also be found in many things we eat on a day-to-day -day basis like plums, strawberries, cauliflowers, and pumpkins. So in this video, we'll be looking at Zalatol as a oral hygiene tool and not as a sugar substitute. And a quick PSA right now, Zalatol is poisonous for dogs. That's because dogs don't have the same digestive system as us humans. So when they eat Zalatol, they actually go and experience hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, which can then lead to their death. So if you decide to bring Xalitol into a household with pets, make sure you're extremely vigilant and keep it away from them. So how do you use Xalitol? It's pretty simple. After a meal, you plop some Xalitol in your mouth, either as a gum or mint form or as crystals, and then you move it around there for around two to three minutes, and then you spit it out if it's a Xalitol gum or crystals. After that, you wait around an hour or so for the Xalitol to do its thing in your mouth, and that's it, you've done a Xalitol session. So how much Xalitol should you be using? It really depends on the Xalitol that you're using. So if you're using something like Xalitol gums, you just take one piece of gum and you plop it in your mouth and chew it for two to three minutes, and that's it. Xalitol mints, often it's actually a different dosing. So this one over here says that one dose is actually two pieces of Xalitol mints. So with Xalitol crystals, there isn't a exact amount that you should be using. However, around one third of a teaspoon, which is around three grams of Xalitol, works great as one Xalitol dose. So what do studies say about Xalitol? Let's look at one of these paragraphs. Xalitol decreases the incidence of dental caries by increasing saliva flow and pH and reducing the number of karyogenetic and periodontopathic bacteria, plaque levels, xerotomia, gingival inflammation, and erosion of teeth. So let's simplify this paragraph into easy bullet point terms. So you get less cavity bacteria, you get more saliva production, you get neutral pH, you reduce the bad bacteria in your mouth, you reduce the plaque levels in your mouth, you reduce your dry mouth, reduce gingival inflammation, and also reduce the erosion of teeth. And these are the benefits of Xalitol if you use it. So what are the downsides of Xalitol? Now when I was using the gums and mint version of Xalitol, I would get diarrhea consistently and I would also feel extremely bloated. But after converting to the Xalitol crystals, where I spat out most of the Xalitol after use, the diarrhea was non-existent and I'm just slightly bloated now. So I highly recommend using the Xalitol crystals if you feel these side effects of diarrhea and bloatedness. Now a recent study mentions that Xalitol is also shown to have an increase in heart attack and stroke. Now these two are extremely serious side effects that one should be taking note of and I did. So I looked into the studies and the studies used Xalitol for consumption. The participants in the study had to drink a Xalitol-based drink with 30 grams of Xalitol. Now, 30 grams of Xalitol is a lot to consume in one go. So Dr. Hazen, the person who ran the study, says, it does not mean throw out your toothpaste if it has Xalitol in it, but we should be aware that consumption of a product containing high levels could increase the risk of blood clot-related events. So in my opinion, using Xalitol for oral hygiene purposes won't really show these risks of heart attack and stroke in most people. However, you should totally be aware of the risks so that if, let's say, you are more susceptible to something like high blood pressure or a stroke, 
you perhaps should be more wary of using xylitol for oral hygiene purposes. So how does xylitol work? The way that xylitol works is that the xylitol feeds the bacteria in your mouth. When it needs sugar, it will eat and feed on the xylitol to then produce energy. However, the bacteria doesn't realize that xylitol is kind of like the equivalent of empty calories. The bacteria will try to process it, but it won't get any energy from the xylitol. And this lack of energy will make it so that the bacteria in your mouth will become less sticky and also it won't be as scary of a bacteria as it normally would be. So it won't stick to your mouth, it won't attack your teeth as aggressively, and so on. And that is how xylitol works. When should you be using xylitol? So once you understand how xylitol works, you kind of also understand when you should be using it. Whenever you introduce bacteria in your mouth that will start attacking your teeth, that is when you need to start using xylitol. So after any single meal or sugary drink or dessert or coffee and so on, these are instances where after consuming these things, you should be using xylitol to feed the bacteria in your mouth and minimize their damage on your oral hygiene. Now I've found specific meals where you actually don't need to use xylitol. Whenever I eat my overnight oats with nuts in the morning or like a simple salad, I don't have that plaque buildup on my teeth. So what I've realized is that I don't really need to use xylitol after those meals. So with that said, not every single meal and beverage needs xylitol after it, but I would say the majority of the meals that you eat do require it. So why can't you drink or eat after xylitol use? Well, it kind of makes sense because if you're eating another meal after using xylitol, you're introducing more bacteria into your mouth and the xylitol can't really combat all of that. And if you're drinking after the use of xylitol, you're kind of washing away that layer of xylitol that you just added to your mouth so that the bacteria now starts feeding on other things in your mouth. So ideally, you don't want to eat or drink anything after the use of xylitol for around an hour or so. And that's when you'll feel that your teeth are nice and smooth and squeaky clean. Why hasn't your dentist recommended xylitol to you? Well, the thing is that dentistry is kind of like a reactive way of dealing with oral hygiene. Whenever you have a cavity, you go to the dentist to fix it. Whenever you have plaque buildup, you go to the dentist to get a cleanup. But xylitol is a preventative measure. It doesn't really fix the issue when it has happened, then it's already kind of too late you need to do it even before that. There's some dentists out there like Dr. Ellie Phillips that has put a lot of spotlight on xylitol, which is, in my opinion, great. And I think that we need more of this understanding of how we can deal with our oral hygiene on a preventative way instead of a reactive way. So should you be getting corn or birch xylitol? So these are two different sources that you'll commonly see your xylitol come from. Birch is usually the more higher quality one, but throughout my experimentation, they're both as good for my oral hygiene purposes. Does xylitol replace brushing, flossing, or mouthwash? It could. My routine right now, I actually don't floss, I don't use a mouthwash, and I only brush once a day. That might sound crazy for some people, but you don't realize that I'm doing so many other things to maintain my mouth. I'm oil pulling in the morning, which makes it so that I don't need to brush in the morning. I also use xylitol throughout the day after every single meal, making sure that there's no plaque buildup throughout the day. And also use this metal pick in my mouth because I know exactly where my nooks and crannies are, where plaque might build up. And if I feel like the plaque has built up there, I then go through all of my teeth with the metal pick and I remove all of the plaque in that moment. And this is something that you need to try on your own and experiment with. Once you add xylitol to your oral hygiene routine, maybe something else bumps off. So does xylitol whiten teeth? No. I haven't found any studies that say it whitens teeth. I haven't experienced whiter teeth myself. And really, it's not anything that is touted around xylitol. Is xylitol expensive? Now, I would say the average use for me, at least, is around three times per day that I use xylitol. And if you are using the gums or mint, that is around 10 cents per dose. So the cost of that in a year is around $110 per year. 
if you are using the Zalatol crystals, it's around half that price at around $55 a year. So I know it, you're skeptical and it's totally fine. It's all natural to be skeptical. I was skeptical when I first tried Zalatol. I was also skeptical when I first tried oil pulling. You have to try it for yourself to get out of that skepticism. There is no comment in the comment section that'll convince you. I won't convince you. You need to convince yourself by trying it and seeing if it works for you. That is the only way you will combat and fight your own skepticism. Now, if you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, you know what to do. Comment down below in the comment section and we'll try to figure it out together. If you like content like this, hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. My name is Paul and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and check out my bonsai tree. Ooh. It's been growing a lot.